Executive Director, thank you so much for joining me. We're marking International Women's Day. Why is it so important? Thank you. Thank you for having me, uh, Tanya. And uh, let me tell you that International Women's Day is we must mark it every year because we celebrate every year half of humanity. We celebrate the power, we celebrate the potential of women and girls, and we recognize their courage, their resilience, and their leadership. We also reflect on how progress towards gender equality is going, and we also see and reflect on how gender equality is being undermined by the multiple interlocking and compounding crises that we are facing in the world today. So it is important to mark the day, to celebrate, but also to reflect and to see how best we can move forward on gender equality and on empowering women and girls. Talking of crisis, how concerned are you about the conflict in Ukraine and the effect it's having on women and girls? Um, Tanya, any, any crisis in the world affects women and girls very badly. And the situation uh, in Ukraine is the same. All conflicts exact their highest price from women and girls. And women and girls particularly are vulnerable in conflicts to sexual and gender-based violence, to loss of access to healthcare, to education, to food, to water, to sanitation. But more importantly, we see also that women are not only victims in crisis, but they are also carrying their families, their communities, and, and their nations from fragility to stability, if we only give them the space to do so. So this is why we seek to empower women in crisis and in countries not in crisis, because, because empowering women from the negotiating table to the family level to play the leadership role that they can play. And if we give them access, if we give them resources, if we support them, and if we have solidarity with them, they are capable always of leading and of shining hope in their homes, in their communities, and in their countries. What more would you like to see being done to help the women and girls in Ukraine at the moment? I would like, uh, uh, Tanya, to see that, first of all, we would like to see that uh, the conflict stops. This is the, the best hope that we can have for women and girls. This is one thing. The other thing is that we would like to see that humanitarian uh, corridors are allowed so that they can have access to humanitarian support so that our teams can be able to access them and give them humanitarian support and also corridors for them to escape the conflict and to escape the dangers uh, as, they, uh, as they face them. So these are important things that we would like to see. We would also like to see that peace, of course, comes back to that part of the world, to Ukraine and that part of the world, of course. Always, as I said, conflicts exact their prices from women and girls, but also when they stop, also women and girls can carry back their societies into peace and into a better life. And what is your message for world leaders to ensure the safety, to, as you say, bring a peaceful end to the, to the conflict there? My message is that we um, let's all stand in solidarity. Let's all do our best to end the conflict. Let's all put on a gender lens also to see how this conflict is affecting women and girls. And let us all come together to find a solution through negotiations and through peaceful means, not forgetting to keep women at the table when we are negotiating this piece and when we are negotiating how we move forward. Tell me about the theme of this International Women's Day, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. You know, um, this year, uh, this uh, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow is also about climate change. You know that climate change is one of the major crises that is facing the world today and that is also facing women and girls today. Again, women and girls are the most affected by climate change when it happens. However, although climate change is a challenge multiplier, women are also solution multipliers 
women are the highest percentage in the world who are responsible for our uh, food and for our agriculture economy. So we need to make sure that their uh, work and that their worth in the work to provide the food basket for the world is preserved and is, is, is also sustainable as well. That is why we need to, to um, uh, address the climate issue and the gender equality issue from the same perspective and to see how best we can move forward on those issues. Well, the Generation Equality Forum Paris 2021 closed with unprecedented pledges of nearly $40 billion of confirmed investments, as well as a global five-year action plan to journey to accelerate gender equality by 2026. Is that possible? I would like to say that we must think that it is possible and we must work to the, towards that possibility. This broad coalition that brought together governments, private sector, civil society, young people, it was a momentum towards the goal of gender parity by 2030 and the goals of the sustainable development goals by 2030 and the SDG 5 in particular by 2030. We have done that through generation equality as you said, we have had a phenomenal uh, commitments, $40 billion in commitments from all the stakeholders that came together, and we have set the stage for moving forward. I must say that on the SDGs, we are only eight years from uh, the deadline of 2030, and therefore we really need to accelerate. We need really to accelerate the work that we do on the SDGs, especially on SDG 5. Let me give you an example. After COVID, we have seen how regression took place on development, on the SDGs, on the work of women, on their health, etc. And we need to ensure that SDG 5 continues to accelerate and to achieve its objective by 2030. For example, I give you one example. One of the 18 indicators of the SDG 5, only one today is close to being achieved. And that is the participation of women in local governance. Now, of course, we must celebrate that and we are happy that we are there, but we need to ensure that all the SDGs, all the indicators of the SDGs move forward for the benefit of the world, but also for the benefit of women and girls throughout the world. You took on the role of executive director of UN Women in September 2021. What does it mean to you personally and what do you want to achieve during your tenure? For me personally, it is, uh, it is such a humbling uh, position to take because I know the challenges that women face throughout the world. I know how much work we need to do. But I also know the courage and the potential of women around the world. And for me, I embraced all this with the opportunities and with the challenges to deliver for women and girls and to make the world also work with us as the United Nations to deliver for women and girls for a better life. This is something has been always my calling. I have been for the past 35 years working in development from the grassroots level to the highest tops of government. And I tell you, without women, without women's participation, there will be no development and there will be no peace. So we, we need them at the table. We need them in societies. We need their decisions. We need their participation in economic opportunities in their countries. We need their political participation and we need to provide them with social protection and other um, avenues where they can really flourish and move forward. And what is your message to women and girls around the world with all the challenges facing post-COVID, the pandemic, and of course, the conflict areas that we've just talked about? You know, my message for, the, uh, for women and girls is that um, we need to look towards our resilience and to continue to move forward and to continue to raise our voices and make the world hear what our plight is and what the, the plight of women in crisis is and how we can help them as, as UN, but other, uh, of course, world leaders and other countries can help them. Young women also uh, need to uh, move forward. They are moving forward in big numbers, in, with big energy, with tremendous energy, if I may say, and we need to ensure, and I will ensure myself, 
to be able to mentor these young uh, generations to move forward. The future, they need to own it, they need to take it, but they cannot own and take the future without taking it on now. And I, my message to the younger generation is be courageous, own the moment and move forward. And we will all support you. Executive Director, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Tanya. It's my pleasure. Thank you.